bones survive or a year or even a hundred years, those remains are there for us. People's life history gets translated into their bones and not only what it can tell us, but what it can tell us about contemporary culture. These bones are like time capsules from the past. That we don't have all the answers. We're still exploring and we're going to find new things and those new things are going to tell us stories that we didn't know about. Made up of lots of different species that have existed in the past, lots of different experiments, and here we exist today. Whereas the bone that's inside you is living. And all the way through your life, you write your life into your skeleton. Other can born yen nal, Igosun. 얕고 따뜻한 바다였습니다. 지금은 초원이 펼쳐진 인류의 요람. 그 수십 미터 아래 숨어 있는 석회암 동굴로 들어가는 길은 아주 오래 전 과거를 탐험하는 것과 같습니다. 그곳에 묻힌 어떤 비밀이 비를 벗겨줄 누군가를 기다리고 있을지도 모릅니다. Chigana Ante So we're here in the Rising Star Cave System. This is the entrance we used to actually get to the Dinaledi and Lissetti chambers where the remains of Homo Naledi were discovered. There's almost three and a half kilometers of cave system here uh, and we access it through these small tunnels and once you're in there, it's not a big cave like this, it's narrow passageways. Rising Star라는 동굴의 30m 아래 깊은 방에는 화석이 된 고인류의 뼈 1,500여 점이 놓여 있었습니다. 그동안 어느 고인류 학자도 보지 못했던 고인류의 비밀스러운 공간을 발견한 것이죠. And imagine this, you're 20 meters underground already. And you look down this 18 centimeter slot. That itself goes 12 meters down into the Dinaledi chamber. When I first stared down that chute, I knew that it was going to be one of the greatest challenges any paleoanthropologist had ever faced. People not only with the skills to work down there, to, that were willing to risk their lives to go down there, 
but also uh, that had the physical ability to go through a slot this wide. 리버거 교수는 페이스북을 통해 발굴에 합류할 팀원을 공개 모집했습니다. 이 파격적인 실험에 전 세계 60여 명의 전문가들이 지원을 했고 여섯 명의 여성 과학자가 선발됐습니다. 20cm도 안 되는 좁은 동굴을 지날 수 있는 작은 체구, 동굴 탐험과 등반 이력, 고인류 지식을 갖춘 전문가들이었습니다. 깊은 동굴에서 뼈를 발굴하는 일은 새로운 도전의 연속이었습니다. 동굴 안에 인터넷도 설치해야 했습니다. Okay, let's try it. I mean, if I guess if it can run off batteries, that actually better. 30m 지하에 있는 발굴 팀과 의사 소통을 하고 발굴 과정을 실시간으로 지켜볼 수 있도록 카메라와 인터폰도 설치했습니다. 마치 모두가 동굴 안에 들어가 있는 것처럼 생중계가 가능했습니다. Um, in this excavation, I'm one of the safety cavers. Um, primarily, at the moment, we're setting up a series of systems, communication systems in the cave, uh, data in the cave to have Wi-Fi down there, so that you can also have a live video feed. And we've also set up some safety ropes and safety equipment. So, do you love this piece of equipment? <laughs> the cable, uh, cables out the way. I black bag them. The actual plug bank. is in a black bag just wrapped up. I couldn't do anything with it because I don't know if you guys want to plug into it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, 기존의 발굴 관행을 깬 모든 과정은 실험적이고 실용적이었습니다. Uh, like pillows very important. Not for sleeping but for you see this um, ladder. We must sit on this and work here, you know, kind of like this. Yes, yes. So it gets very sore. <laughs> <웃음> 고 인류학자들은 뼈를 찾고 질문을 던집니다. 이 깊은 동굴로 들어간 존재는 누구일까요? 질문에 대한 답을 찾으려면 직접 그들이 간 길을 가야 했습니다. Starts quite easily. You can actually walk through the first couple of meters of the cave. Very soon it gets very narrow. You have to turn your entire body sideways so that you can squeeze through the rocks. 라이징 스타 동굴은 뼈가 오랜 시간 보존되기에 최적의 환경이라는 석회암 동굴입니다. 석회암의 주성분인 탄산칼슘이 토양의 산성도를 낮춰서 뼈가 썩어 없어지지 않고 잘 보존됩니다. 한 사람만 겨우 지날 수 있는 좁은 동굴을 탐험하기 위해서 리 버거 팀은 사다리를 놓고 통로를 만들었습니다. 사다리를 타고 내려가면 본격적인 동굴 탐험이 시작됩니다. 특히 슈퍼맨이 날듯 엎드린 채 기어가야 하는 구간은 모험이나 다름 없습니다. But it takes almost 30 or 40 minutes to travel that 130 meters. Very tight passages where you have to crawl. One of them is called Superman crawl, where you have to stick your arm over your head to slide through. 지름이 25cm 정도 되는 비좁은 통로. 이 통로를 지나기 위해서는 배를 바닥에 대고 한 팔을 머리 위로 올린 채 다른 팔은 몸에 붙여서 기어가야 합니다. 이런 자세로 기어가다 보면 피해의 공포증을 느낄 때도 있습니다. 슈퍼맨 기어가기가 끝나면 이번에는 용의 등이라는 공간이 기다리고 있습니다. But on one side is an 8 meter drop and on the other side is a 6 meter drop. So we wear harnesses. Um... 
and put those on our body and then rope up this area. Ulting Ulting Kaparan Bayuga, Yonge Tungsiram Yajaso, Yonge Tungira Pulina Nigo, Mome Pachel Moko, Joshimeso, Yishimeteral Tungban Heamida. Rising Star Tungurasan, Modern Quark Jadri, Tamam Gagadenda. Okay, excellent. Thanks. So they are at the top of the chute, they're going to start climbing down into the chamber. So in about five or ten minutes, you're going to start seeing them. 슛은 동굴 탐험의 마지막 관문으로 폭 18cm, 높이 12m의 좁은 수직 구멍입니다. 그 아래에서는 인류 역사의 위대한 순간을 만날 수 있죠. The first time coming into the cave, going into the Dinaledi chamber, was obviously exciting, but a little bit scary because you know none of us had seen. The actual cave before we had seen pictures, but not the actual place. And so, going down that very narrow chute for the first time, I thought, "Oh no, 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 no!" Um, but then, once we were in, it was very, very exciting. And... 남아프리카 초원의 30m 지하에서는 1,500개 고인류 뼈 조각의 베일을 벗기는 작업이 이루어지고 있습니다. Hi. So we're just checking how's it going down there? Uh, yeah, pretty well. Um, as you can see on the monitor, Becca's working away. Um, we've got uh, quite a bit of bone exposed at the moment, but we're not sure that anything is going to sort of come up right away today. Who is the owner of this tree? How did they get into this tree? There was no doubt about it. There was no doubt. We don't know why they're in these various chambers deep underground. After eliminating all of the uh, probable causes, you know, they'd uh, been swept in there by a flood or a carnivore had killed them and dragged them in there. We came to the conclusion, after we eliminated those things, that, that Homo naledi must have been deliberately disposing of its dead. The Homo naledi is the name of Homo naledi for the past 지금까지의 종들과는 다른 새로운 종이었습니다. 치아와 어깨뼈는 원시적인 특징을 띠고 있었지만 신체의 중심에서 먼 부분들은 현생 인류와 비슷한 특징을 보였습니다. 약간 휜 손으로는 도구를 쥐었을 것입니다. 긴 다리, 현생 인류와 유사한 발로 직립 보양을 했을 것입니다. 무엇보다 가장 놀라웠던 것은 작은 뇌와 장례 의식을 했다는 가능성이었습니다. So, Homo naledi, uh, they are very interesting species because they have a very small brain, it's just bigger than my fist. Uh, we have big brains and we think about our own mortality, we think about death and we go through very elaborate uh, ritualized processes when people die as humans. It's in fact the thing that almost defines us as humans. But if Homo naledi was doing that, it means that they may have had a level of consciousness, at least in that area, that was close to ours or equal to ours. That's very surprising with a small brain. And it would certainly be the first time we've met another species that isn't close to us that had that level of consciousness. And that's remarkable. When, until things like Homo naledi were found, most people, and I think many scientists, thought that the story of human origins was very simple. It was just this gradual evolution. You've even probably seen t-shirts that had that kind of picture of the evolution of humankind. 
수십만 년 동안 묻혀있다 등장한 날레디가 진화에 대한 생각을 깼습니다 인류의 신장이 계속 커져왔다는 이론이 맞지 않았고 뇌가 점점 크게 진화했다는 이론 역시 날레디의 작은 뇌로는 설명되지 않습니다 날레디는 인류 진화에 대해 새로운 물음과 과제를 던졌습니다 What Homo naledi says is it's much more complex than that. There's no linear evolution of humans. That it's more like a braided stream where things would diverge, but sometimes parts of them would come back, and that we're not a purebred species. We're really just sort of a, a mongrel species made up of lots of different species that have existed in the past, lots of different experiments, and here we exist today. 질문이 무엇이든 답은 하나가 아닙니다. 영원한 정답도 없습니다. 마찬가지로 인류의 진화도 정해진 순서와 방향에 따라 이루어진 것이 아닙니다. <목소리>